Oh, yeah, I see some painting there. And then we go there. Oh, wow. Hello and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today we are going to be candling on day seven of incubation. I'm going to show you what that looks like and how to do it yourself. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about the how, what, and why of candling eggs. If you're new to chickens and incubating, you may not know what candling is. So we'll start off with the basics. What is candling? Basically, you're shining a light inside of an egg to see what's going on. You can tell different stages of development during this process. And on day seven, it's the perfect day to tell if your eggs are fertile or not. We're gonna be able to tell which eggs are winners, quitters, and yolkers. There are many things that contribute to how well you are able to candle your eggs. The thickness and the color of the eggs plays a role in how well you can see through the eggs. So if it is a super thick eggshell, it might be harder to see. And if it's a super dark eggshell, it could also be difficult to see. There are some steps you can take to help you make sure you are successful with your candling. Some of the things that I like to suggest is that you find the darkest room in your house. For me, it's the bathroom. The bathroom is also one that I can easily control the temperature and humidity. While I'm candling my eggs, I am pulling them out of the incubator. So it is important to me that I keep those eggs humid and warm during that time. So I took a shower, steamed it up in here and got it nice and warm for the eggs. Then I'm gonna bring my entire incubator into my bathroom and start going through those eggs and showing you. One very important tool for candling your eggs is to have a good light source. It can be as simple as the flashlight on your cell phone and holding the egg right up against the edge of the cell phone or just a little flashlight and holding it up to the egg. What some people do is they'll put a piece of tape around the top of the flashlight to help make it sit snugly against the egg to keep the light all going right into the egg. My preference is to get an actual egg candling light. I had one and during the move, something happened to it. So I'm doing a DIY today. Just a really good bright flashlight, small. I've put some masking tape around the top to make it sit snugly against the egg. And I'm gonna hold it against the air cell end of the egg and look inside and see what I can find. When candling your eggs, you're gonna to wanna to look and see if you see any cracks. Sometimes there are cracks you do not see. If you have cracks in your eggs, you may want to either toss them or glue them or tape them are some methods that people have used with great success. In candling your eggs, you're gonna discover which ones are winners. Your winner eggs are the ones that are fertile. You're gonna see an embryo and veins. You might see eye spots on the little baby chick forming inside, and you could possibly even see movement. Quitters are ones that were fertilized, but at some point in the development in the first seven days, they failed. And what you're gonna see with these is a blood ring, which is going to be a dark ring around the edge of the shell inside of the egg. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to save these and then they will go into the compost. And then you have the yolkers, which are unfertilized eggs. Basically, you're not gonna see anything. <laughs> it's gonna be the air cell on top and maybe you might see the yolk, but for the most part, it's gonna look like a clear egg. I'm really excited to see what eggs are developed and which ones I could potentially hatch in a few more weeks. Most of these eggs that I'm candling today came from my friend Cam at Ponderosa Pine Poultry. He was kind enough to share some of his nice olive eggers, blue eggers, and even some very special blue lace red wine dot. And then of course, turning on the incubator means let's fill it the rest of the way up with our own backyard mix. We aim to have multicolored eggs. So we have blue, green, olive, brown, all the colors of the rainbow. All right, so let's get started. Hey, hey there, little guy. If you see that dark black spot, not the one on the shell right there, but right there. See how it's moving? That dark spot on the moving blob is the eye. How cool is that? Definitely developing. I like to look from both ends. 
I feel like sometimes I see more from one end than the other. But you can see there's some veins coming down there. That's the air cell line right there. And you can see the little embryo floating up to the surface right there. Precious. So one by one, I take eggs from the incubator and put them back in again when I'm done. Keeping them warm. Thought I saw some movement right there. Oh, yep, I see some veining there and the embryo there. Oh, wow. I hope the video is picking that up because that baby is moving around. Nice looking healthy embryo and eye spot. That's so cool. You want to handle your eggs gently. You don't want to do any fast movements. Oh, look at that baby right there. Oh my gosh, it almost looks like there's two in there. I've never had twins develop, but it's definitely possible. And you can see the veining and the air cell up at the top where it's clear. That's a good shot of the air cell. That's about what size it'll be now. And as we go further through incubation, it will get smaller. Neat. Doing good so far on these. See the air cell. Oh, there we go. I just saw the little eye spot. Yep, there it is. That's our embryo. Definitely developing. Some good fertility on these blue lace red wine dots. It will get harder to see when I go to the darker eggs, so I wanted to start out with these. Isn't that neat? Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> so always be real gentle in your movement with these little eggs, because that's a baby. Oh my gosh, you can almost see the whole outline of the baby. Oh, saw something as I spun. I definitely see the veins in the embryo on this one as well. So cool. I don't have to tell Cam. He's got some good rooster action going on in his coop. Because we are doing really good on fertility on these. You don't expect 100% fertility. There we go. But 100% fertility is a nice thing. <laughs> you see the movement right there. Wow. Wow. The ones that aren't marked with any letters are from our backyard. Oh, yes. We have mostly Americanas. Easter Eggers, Morons, Rhode Island Red, and some Golden Comet Hens. But our roosters are all Olive Eggers or Americanas. All of them were hatched from either blue or green or olive eggs. Pretty baby. I see something right up there, little eye spot. Whoa, that one's moving. <gasps> so cool. So cool how much they move. It makes me wonder if they move that much when they're just sitting still or if it's the movement and the candle that makes them move more. Oh yeah, there's a baby in there. Then come on up to the top, buddy. There you are. Oh, 
This one seems to be lower down. Let's try looking at it from the other end. Now he seems to be on that end. She, she, always say she, not he. We want hands, we want hands preferably, not roosters. Ah, and there we have a perfect example of a yoker. It's just clear, no development at all. You don't see any veins along the air sac. The air sac looks a little larger. That slight amount of darkness and movement appears to just be the yolk. Oh, this one's such a dark egg. This is what I'm talking about with the dark eggs being so much harder to see. Let me cover up that edge of light coming through. Maybe we'll see. Oh. So much harder to see through the eggs, but it definitely looks like I can see some veins right there and there, and I think I see the movement. Yeah. So if you can't see through the egg well enough, I, I would just leave it in. Honestly, that's what I've done in the past. So most of the eggs we've looked at so far are winners. Oh, and there is a crack did not see that when I began incubating. Some people candle eggs before putting them in an incubator to make sure there's no cracks and that's probably a best practice idea. But when I'm just grabbing to throw them in to fill up the incubator, I didn't really think about that. Now, if I was selling it to somebody, I definitely would have looked first. Most of the time, a crack of that, yeah. So it looks like there may have been some development. Oh my goodness, I don't know if I can say that this is a quitter, but it almost looks like there was some development and then it stopped. I don't see any movement when I hold real still. The only time I see movement is when I turn. So I think that is a quitter. It's not the typical bloodline you see, but it's also not a typical quitter because it's cracked, unfortunately. It's sad, but it happened. Another dark egg. So much harder to see on these. Oh, I see somebody moving. So much harder to see though. You can see it right there. This was one of our larger golden comet eggs that I just threw in for a whim. Oh, there's a blood ring. Perfect example. Let's see if I can, yep, you see the ring going around? See it going across here? That is a perfect example of a blood ring. So that one started to develop and it did not survive. So. Unfortunately, that is a quitter. Good looking air cell. Hmm. I see some veining there. Oh, is that my embryo? Or is maybe it died? It doesn't seem to be moving on its own, just stuck right there. So not quite in, it's not a blood ring, but it's where the developing embryo gave up and is now stuck to the side. See there is particles moving in there, but that is not moving. That looks good. Good air cell. Sometimes it's 
harder to see when you have more of a speckly pattern on the eggshell. It's harder to tell if there's veining in there or not. The movement in there, oh, there we go. I thought it was live. So there we go, there's embryo movement there. I think it's moving. This could be a quitter, but I'm not ready to say that for sure. When we check again on day 18, we'll know for sure. So something I like to do is if I see one like that that's questionable, I'm going to go ahead and use my pencil and write a question mark on that one. That way I know to pay closer attention when I do the next candling on day 18. Now there's no telling why certain embryos begin to develop and then stop. It could be any number of factors. All right, that's movement. When I'm standing still and I see that movement, that's a good, yep, yep, there's a nice spot. Oh, that's a good one. Hello, baby. <sighs> so cool. It's like it's doing exercises. This is a true blue Easter egg, meaning it's a very blue egg genetic. Blue over blue. And there's definitely veining. You can see all of those veins in there. Looking good. It is. Where are you, baby? It is a little harder to see, though, isn't it? Where'd the baby at? You know, always see the embryo, but with the number of veins on this, I'm gonna, oh, did you see it? Just popped up near the top. All right, where'd it go? Yeah, I see some movement there. Yes, yes. I would say that to baby around. <laughs> wow, those are beautiful. Beautiful example of veins. And you can see the embryo just behind it. Bouncing about. Healthy little tyke. It's interesting how some of them can seem more active than others, and yet they will probably all hatch. I have hatched thousands of eggs, chicken, turkey, duck, well, well into the thousands in my lifetime and it still is just a miracle to see the life happening in these eggs, to see the movements, to see them when they start pipping and hatching out. It's just beautiful. All right, this is where it gets hard. <laughs> Uh, if you can see, this is a dark moron egg. It was a moron's hand, and they are in with an Americana rooster. So it'll be an olive egg. Unfortunately, that looks like a yoker. So, yeah, that one was not fertile. I don't think.
Wait a minute. Was that an eye spot? <gasps> Y'all, this is why I gotta be careful with these dark eggs. I've gotten to the point where I actually don't candle my dark eggs very often. I just leave them in. <laughs> and this is one of those cases. All right, so I'm gonna look a lot more carefully at these. Even though it might be harder to see I don't want to toss anything that might be developing inside. Make a point to move it a little bit more than I normally do. Let's see if I see the embryo roll to the top or what have you. Uh, uh, like that right there. That Did you see that movement? Whew, I think I'm just gonna keep all these dark brown ones. I don't think I'm gonna toss any. <laughs> all right, I'm skipping past the rest of the chocolate brown dark ones because I'm gonna keep them all. That looks, yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm hoping that you guys are seeing this as good as I am because this video quality is much better than I have done in the past and I'm really happy to be able to see what we can see. It's so cool. No matter how many times I do this, it does not get old. Oh, look at that. So cool. Hmm. That air sac looks slightly off-centered, but not too bad. It is better if you cup your hand around the flashlight if you don't have an egg handling flashlight, just to block out that excess light so you can see things better. It seems like the eggs that are more porous, where you can see holes here and there, that's just a thinner calcium layer. It seems like they may suffer a little bit with less ability to survive and thrive. But I can see that baby thriving now, so that's good. Oh, geez. So you see this ring? This is on the side of the egg. That should be on the top. That's the air cell. That's not good for hatching. It might develop just fine, but it's going to have a difficult hatch. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trace an outline around that with my pencil so that if I have to assist this hatch, which is not recommended, um, then I will be able to do so safely. As you can see, I just drew a circle where the AR cell is. Some people would just toss this for having an air cell in that location. I'm going to make sure that that stays pointing up during the hatching time. Well, that went good. Not bad, not bad at all. We have six eggs that we will be disposing of in the compost. Mm. But in the same breath, we had so many excellent looking fertile eggs. So we have lots of winners in this one. I hope that this video helps you and that you've learned something about candling eggs and what to look for on day seven to find out if you have winners, quitters, or yokers. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.